The remaining items on the checklist enable us to gather important information about the site and the specimen collected. Jewelers tags are very useful. As you make a new collection, prepare a tag with your name and collecting number and attach it directly to the specimen. Specimens collected without details of the site and the plant are as good as useless. As in most herbaria, we at the New England Herbarium have produced a collecting book and use it to record specimen information. The headings are explained inside the cover. In filling out the book, aim at brevity and consistency. All these records are transferred onto the Herbarium database using the standard headings in the book. Always use a pencil or permanent black ink pen. Biro or normal felt tipped pens smudge when wet and fade with time. Use initials and full last name. The collector's number starts from one for your first collection and continues in series. With more than one collector, the numbering is that of the first person. Record this name and number on the label and attach it directly to the specimen. Add the names of the others in the collecting book. Now you have a definite link between the information in the collecting book and the tagged specimen. Also tag any fragments and other material gathered. Location is recorded in two ways. Once as a short description and a second time as point data, the latitude and longitude, at least two minutes or seconds if using a GPS. East, 152, 17, 44. General touring and topographic maps will get you to a site and let you define the latitude and longitude. Be sure to record the altitude. A handheld altimeter or watch altimeter are convenient tools for determining altitude. Remember to calibrate them at a known altitude each day. A geographic positioning system would give you latitude and longitude down to about 30 metres. Altitude readings are a lot less reliable. A GPS is great, but they simply don't work in rainforests. It needs a fairly open canopy to sight the satellites. For topography, record slope and aspect. South southeast 15 degrees slope. Record colour and texture of the substrate and its parent material. For example, chocolate loam over basalt. Describe the vegetation in terms of the dominant plants and their structure. Here's an example using the SPECT system. The tree layer is dominated by eucalypts with a projected foliage cover of 70%. It's open forest. The trees are tall, more than 30 metres. I guess about 45 metres. I estimate their height against a known scale. I know Chris is 1.75 metres tall, so I'll use him to calibrate a two metre finger gap, and I'll measure up the tree using that gap. It appears that the trees are about 40 to 44 metres tall. The grass layer is well developed, and there are patches of shrubs. Putting that together, Let's record the vegetation as grassy, tall, open forest. Knowing the names of the dominant trees, we can refine the description to Eucalyptus fastigata, Eucalyptus nobilis, Eucalyptus obliqua, grassy, tall, open forest. We need to record information that will not be apparent from the specimen itself. For example, growth form. Given this tree, you might record spreading tree to 12 metres high, full fibrous, dark grey bark, diameter at breast height 70 centimetres, locally dominant. Portable tape recorders can be used to collect site information. However, you'll still need to label the specimens. Portable computers are great and they're becoming smaller and more versatile. When their robustness and portability approaches that of a collecting book, and when they're dustproof, waterproof, and perhaps include the features of a GPS, 
I'll be interested in using them in the field to record specimen information for direct downloading into herbarium or specimen databases. An obvious feature of most plants and animals is that no two individuals are exactly alike. Taxonomic studies try to understand this variation in biodiversity and it's important to adequately sample the apparent variation. There are two broad approaches to sampling plants. The first involves collecting plants for floristic studies and the second involves close studies of particular groups of plants for taxonomic studies. Floristic studies are interested in the presence and absence of plants from a particular area. We want to record the plants occurring in this area and collect at least one specimen of each species to vouch for the names on our list. We can check them off the species list and move on to the next one, since only one specimen of each is required for this study. Here the emphasis in collecting is simply to collect the best available material. Try to find a fertile flowering and fruiting specimen. In dealing with eucalypts and acacias, well-developed buds and fruit are more important than flowers. Good specimens make for easy identification and worthy herbarium vouchers. Work out whether you need to know and collect the subspecies and or varieties present. Sampling for taxonomic studies will vary depending upon the particular aims of the project. In taxonomic studies, the main aim is to capture the full range of variation of the taxon or taxa under study. For a genus level study, you sample the species. In a species level study, you sample the populations of each species and keep collection samples of individuals separate. But where small whole plants fit on one sheet, it's okay to lump single population collections under one number. The number of specimens depends on logistics and need. Try to cover the range of apparent variation, from small to big plants, of flowering and fruiting material, leaf shape, fruit size, flower colour and so on. In this case we're looking at variation within and between different species of Lamatia. We want to capture as much of the biological variation that these species exhibit across their geographical and habitat range. At this site, we scan the population and collect, as separate numbers, more than one specimen. Here there are small and taller bushes of Trochocarpa, so we make sure that we get samples of both and record any obvious difference across the range. This more thorough sampling provides the raw material used to describe this plant and to compare it with others. Duplicates, or replicates, are multiple specimens of the same taxon collected at the same time and place. Give these the same collecting number. It's common to collect enough material for several herbarium sheets. One or two sheets will be kept in the herbarium you work in. The others could be swapped for other specimens with herbaria across the country and around the world. Material is sent after pressing, drying and labelling. Using the plastic bag technique, your specimens collected at an individual site are placed into the one bag. Adding a little water to the bag reduces wilting. Specimens are either tagged now or a single tag identifies the site. A rubber band seals the bag. At the end of the day, the specimens can then be tagged, if you haven't already done so, and transferred to a press. This method is quick but fragile flowers will shrivel and mix-ups with specimen numbers are more likely. A new plastic bag for each new locality should minimise mix-ups. An alternative method for handling material in the field is collecting and tagging individual specimens and placing them immediately into a day press. At the end of each day, transfer the contents of the day press and bind with string between stiff paper. If you've been collecting into plastic bags, prepare the specimens between sheets of newspaper as if you were using a day press and tie the contents between cardboards. <laughs>